Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to a bit of a hastily thrown together video. I've been meaning to make this one for a while because I know the <laughs> um, historical romance readathon starts tomorrow and most of you probably already have your TBR made but what this did is I've had a few friends reach out to me who are looking for indie published historical romances um, because it is something that I have been looking into because I meant to make this video as well as I've just been collecting them for the last couple years since I've really been reading more indie published books. Um, so a few of these, if you've been around my channel for a while, you've probably heard of them quite a few times. Uh, but I just wanted to put this all kind of in one video and then I'm going to get it edited and put it up right away just in case some people haven't found some for these already. So most of these I have already read, but some of them are part of series that like I've only read the first one, but I'm going to tell you about the whole series. And if I've read the whole series, I will tell you. Also, I'm part of the cute shirt club today and I did do one of my Outlander shirts um, I just ordered a bunch of shirts from Lady Whistledown and from um, Literary Enchantments, which Literary Enchantments I'm actually a rep for because my friend Lord is from Chapters We Love. This is her shop. And so I have a rep code always down below. Um, I mostly talk about it on Instagram, but I figured I'd talk about it here. She has amazing mugs and shirts and all this fun stuff. And there's a code for 10% off down below if you check that out. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive into this because I ended up having a lot of books to talk about and the first one um, where do I want to start the first one I actually want to start with the anthology and this is one I've been giving a lot of people and it's the most recent like one of these that I've talked about um, but it's gonna lead us into a bunch of the authors who are who are in it and a lot of them do self-published and so that's Duke I'd like to F so I have been recommending this to a lot of people who've asked because there are five different novellas to choose from so if you're gonna read this for the readathon, like you don't have to read the whole thing. You can pick one of them. Um, and within this, there is Sierra Simone, Joanna Shoup, Ava Lee, Nicola Davison, and Adriana Herrera. Um, three of these are age gaps. There's a little bit of kinkiness in them. They are just so much fun. And I knew I was gonna like it because I had read a couple of the authors before and a couple of them were new to me and I'm obsessed now. So this one I wanna recommend, you know, take this as someone recommended this book to me, as well as, I mean, it's just great. I read this whole book right after it has my, had my wisdom teeth out. My friend Crystal gave it to me as a gift and it was such a sweet gift. I actually made a video called Dukes I'd Like to F that was inspired by this book before I ever read it, <laughs> just because I liked the concept of it. Um, but yeah, this is, this has five different stories in it. They're all amazing. Um, and I didn't want to spend too much time talking about each of the five of these because I've talked about it in previous videos, but this is indie published. These authors all got together and put this together during the pandemic and it's amazing. So I'm actually kind of going to go deeper into a few of the authors who are on this then and tell you about the other books of theirs that I have read and then we'll keep going from there. So the first one that I will talk about is Sierra Simone. Um, so she does have a few historicals, um, specifically her series that is the Markham Trilogy. Um, and the first one is called The Awakening of Ivy Leavehold. Now I bring this one up all the time. This is actually a retelling of Jane Eyre. So it's got all the gothic vibes, which isn't a surprise because Sierra Simone is really good with the gothic vibes, even in her like contemporary books. She has that like deep longing taboo feel going in her stories as it is. Um, and this series, yes, is about Ivy Leavold, who I believe now it's been a while since I've read this, but yes, she ends up going to stay at this house. I can't remember if she's supposed to be a companion or an or a governess if it's that same setup or if it had something to do with um, an ex who died like his ex-wife died and she ends up there I can't quite remember that aspect but it does definitely have Jane Eyre vibes as well as some BDSM involved I will tell you right now a lot of these historic romances I'm about to share have BDSM involved because it's kind of like why they're self-published but not all of them I'm just letting you know you're gonna hear that a lot a lot of these have BDSM 
elements to them. But Sierra Simone, she writes a very longing series. This is a continuous trilogy. Um, I believe it's the awakening, the disciplining, and the something else of Ivy Leafhold. And then there's a short little novella um, epilogue that's really cute. So I love this series. I really want to buy it and reread it. I just, Sierra Simone has beautiful covers. So that's Sierra Simone. Then there is Nicola Davidson. And now I haven't read a ton of hers. Um, besides her anthology entry, I've read her Fallen trilogy. So there's this trilogy called The Fallen. I believe it's Surrendering to or Seducing um, Lord Sin. There is um, The Devil's Submission. And then the... Uh, something of Viscount Vice. I've put them up. Sorry that I can't remember. I just wrote down sin, devil, and vice. <laughs> and they're these three men who are partners in owning this sex club that is not completely BDSM club, but that definitely happens there. Because the first story and the third story don't have as much to do with BDSM. I first started this trilogy actually with the second book because I was looking for um, submissive men to read about. And the devil character in this one, he is a submissive. And he's actually married. And his wife, like, they're separated at the beginning. So this is a novella and it's like a marriage and trouble novella. And he doesn't, like, he is a submissive. But spe specifically in this time period, it's even harder for people to understand if you have sexually submissive tendencies and you're a man and it's just almost impossible for you to be accepted or more importantly, for you to get what you need out of a sexual relationship because he, again, he owns this sex club with these three and there's only a few people at the sex club that know that he's sexually submissive and there's a few like mistresses that he will submit to. Um, and I don't mean mistress as in like he's sleeping with them but mistresses who will do his bdsm um kinks for him so mistress with like capital m um and i don't know it was absolutely fascinating i read this book because it was recommended by the faded maids podcast and just recently after i read this i was like oh yeah that series by nicola davison is three books so the covers as you can tell are absolutely gorgeous this series was so much fun to read. Um, yeah, definitely check her out. Um, they're just quick little shots. Um, and they were a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so those are the ones from there. So let's go ahead and, oh, one other one I'll mention real quick. I didn't grab it, but I talk about this book all the time as well. So that's why I didn't want to go into it too much, but Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. This is a historical pirate romance. This is a very dark romance. This is one of my favorite books of 2020. I absolutely adore it. And this is a historical romance. It is the only historical romance that Pam Godwin has done. Man, I wish she would do more. Even if, okay, even if she wouldn't give me more of this, of the characters in this book, if she would do another book set in this world, in this like pirate world, like I would die. But you can hear me gush more about Sea of Ruin and other people gush about Sea of Ruin in other videos, but it is a historical romance if you're, and it's indie published if you want to look for that. So next I want to show, this is another author who I found because I was looking for a submissive Duke and that is Scarlett Peckham. And so this is the Duke I Tempted. I, it is a great failure of mine that I have not read books two and three in this series, even though I own them. I know what's wrong with me. I don't know. Um, but yes, this one also has a tortured hero in it. So I was recommending this to people who needed a tortured hero, but this is the Duke of Westmead and he has been called back home because he's now the Duke. Um, he was never like meant to be the Duke. I believe there's a lot of death in his family. And so that's why he's the Duke now. And then there's this woman who just wants to own a, she's a botanist who just wants to own a nursery, like a plant nursery. Um, and she wants to be able to do that on her own, but like her reputation is very important to her then because it's already difficult for a woman to go into business without a protector or a man helping her. But all of that rests on her reputation. And so if she loses that at any time, she could be in trouble. And so when the Duke and her are around each other, things just kind of explode. And 
we as the reader know from the beginning that he's a sexual submissive because it's the first scene that we see of his and he really needs that to help him get released and to help him to you know handle a lot of his guilt he's having a lot of guilt for quote unquote reasons so I don't know but I, I love this book so much this one's not super long it's fantastic she just got me so good with this one and then the Earl I ruined this is about the sister of the Duke of Westmead I believe and um and the Earl of Ant of Apthrop. And again, I don't know much about this one because I haven't read it. And then The Lord I Left, I know this one is about a minister and a woman who is training at the sex club to be a dominatrix. And they end up kind of involved with each other in an interesting way. And so, man, I just need to read these. See, the thing is, is that they hurt so good. But I mean, this book is fantastic. It was one of my favorite books of like 2019, I think is when I read that book. It was a long time ago. Um, but yeah, definitely check these out if you want to. They're not as, at least the first one wasn't as heavy with BDSM as some of these other ones I mentioned. Like, yes, he's submissive, but a lot of that they look at more at like the psyche of why he is and so there aren't a ton of scenes that actually involve the BDSM in it um so if you also are a novice to that and you you maybe don't like those elements as much I feel like it could be a good starter book for you as well um because the reasoning about why he needs to be submissive in certain situations I feel like is a very well explained then this is a Another book that has BDSM. I'm sorry. I told you they just, that is just how it worked out. We're almost done with the ones that have that in it. Um, but there is Rough Surrender by Carrie Silverwood. This is also a, this is a standalone in the published historical romance. So this is a really great one. Um, it doesn't look historical by the cover of it, but yes, this book, oh my God, this one is amazing. This is also a historical that takes place in Egypt and it takes place at an airplane Symposium, and this woman who's actually a pilot she goes there you know to learn more about the planes and she wants to you know keep getting better at being a pilot and she runs into this man who they just instantly have a connection with each other and it becomes clear that she might be interested in submitting to him but it being historical if they're not planning to marry each other this is a big risk for her besides like the BDSM elements, which she doesn't know what to think about, but also because she's risking her reputation, which could be risking her career if she ruins it. Kind of the same thing as with Poppy Cavendish in The Duke I Tempted. Your reputation is everything when you are a woman. And if you lose it, nobody maybe will do business with you. But I love this one also because Lionheart, that's his name, he's an inventor. So he actually invents a lot of his own BDSM equipment. So maybe check that out. All right, then I have um, The Courage to Love by Samantha Kane. So this was recommended to me from a Minaj video that I did recently. I'll be honest, I wasn't a huge fan of this book, but I can see why people really loved it. Um, this is about these two soldiers and a widow of their friend who end up in a menage relationship together. There are a lot of trigger warnings in this book and I got a little frustrated with the two male characters for like how they like draw things out a certain way. However, again, I understand why a lot of people liked it and I wanted to put it in here as an option. This one is an MFM that becomes an MMF. And I really do like stories like that. So that's why this was a story that I was like, oh, I want to DNF it. I don't want to read it. And then I saw the elements of like, oh, the swords are getting closer to crossing. And I kind of like this. So there's that. Um, then um, a couple other that I don't have the physical books for. I'll keep going through those. There is The Madness of Amelia Gray by Julia Bennett. This is about a woman who... Um, is put in a mental asylum because she enjoys sex. Um, she's not really crazy, but I, her family like doesn't know what to do with her. So she ends up in an insane asylum. Um, and then there's this doctor there who's a bit older than her. He's a widow. And she starts 
trying to seduce him so that he will help her to escape. Even though he's fully aware of what's happening, he can't seem to stay away from her because he's really intrigued by her, even though he knows that she's trying to seduce him so that he'll help her. There is, okay, okay, okay. This one I'm super excited to talk about. This one's actually not out yet. So it's not a great recommendation for like the historical romance readathon, but I know that won't be the only reason people watch this video. Um, and this video, I had the privilege to read an arc for it. This is called Love and War by Shira Lynn. This book is amazing. This is a BWWF, I don't know the things, but they're both like chunky people. She is a gorgeous, curvaceous black lounge singer in Paris in 1940. And he is a German surgeon who is being tricked into working for the Third Reich by his father. So I know this is a modern historical romance. I know I just explained a lot of really intense things. However, this book was so beautiful. I cannot wait to get a physical copy in my hands and just mark up all the gorgeous things. Like I wrote my review for it and I told the author was like, I feel so inadequate for the words to explain how much I love this book because I know that people are going to be like worried about the themes and she does do good trigger warnings. And if there's anything about those that you're afraid of, like I understand. However, I feel like the respect that these characters were given and the way that we worked our way through the story was so good. And it was so sexy. This forbidden romance had so much longing. Um, the setup of it is that this lounge singer, um, our hero Emil has seen Victoire before. And he's kind of has a little bit of a crush on her. He's seen her perform and straight up, he hasn't seen many black people in his life because he is not around them. And he sees her and hears her sing and he is so entranced by her that he's a bit of a fangirl for her. And so a couple months later, our heroine, um, things have gotten real uncomfortable, real scary where she lives because Paris in the 1940s, okay? And she starts getting harassed by a German soldier. And so Emil and his friend, uh, I can't remember his friend's name off the top of my head, they step in and Emil is ready to fucking kill these people. He's just going to rip them limb from limb. But they have to come up with a story about why he was stopping these guys from harassing her because stopping an assault is not a good enough reason, apparently. So he pretends that she is his newly hired maid. And then they have to follow through with this story. And so he basically has rescued her from this, but now he's like kind of made her his servant just like by accident. But Victoire understands this. She understands what he did for her. And she's like, I could have died or been made into just a horrible situation. And so she really like dives right into trying to be his housekeeper. And she looks trying to learn how to cook because she's never done it before. Um, she's actually like, that's the crazy thing too, is to see you know, the changes that they have to go through. And so they spend a lot of time just kind of dancing around each other because the power dynamic is very well discussed, like at least in their heads, like Emil is like, this is a kind of the worst thing that could ever happen because I can never make a move on this woman because I'm in a position of power and I literally hold her life in my hands. And I love that we talk about it. Of course, they're going to find a way to make it work. It's going to be great. This does have an HEA and we know that from the beginning because this is kind of a flashback story. I spend a lot of time talking about this book, but nobody else has really read it yet. And I believe it comes out mid-February. I'll put the date up by the picture. Um, and I'm just so excited for it. And this was the perfect video to talk about it in. Like it was the perfect video to talk about it in. It's fantastic. And I promise you any issue that you are thinking of based on the description, like number one, it gets addressed. Number two, there are still trigger warnings because the author doesn't pull any punches. This is an own voices story. Um, and like, I mean, for the diversity aspects, I would say. This is Shira Lynn is a black woman writing this story. And it's clear from her author's note and the things that she did research because she knew that this was going to be a hotly contended debut. This is her debut book. And so I just appreciated that. But that's coming from my perspective. Take that for what you will. If you like forbidden romances with angst and edge, do it. Oh, I swear, it's also one of the sweetest books. That I've read and it's the beginning of the year already so anyway moving along okay now I have 
some right here that these are authors who are traditionally published and indie published, okay? So I have Valerie Bowman's indie published trilogy, the, um, what's it called, The Footman's Club. So I actually read an arc of this one, The Footman and I, and then there's also The the Duke Looks Like a Groomsman and The Valet Who Loved Me. So this is a trilogy about these three guys who are all rich and wealthy and they want to like find women who will be with them without their titles which is kind of fun and so they go undercover as these like different guys and it actually like the author explains it really good in the beginning so I've only read the first one so there's that um but she sets it up good that like this this scenarios for all three of them all start at the same party and then it like goes off from there so they kind of come up with this bet slash plan together at the beginning so this is by Valerie Bowman she's written some other books that I really love but these are some of her historicals it's absolutely gorgeous and then we got to talk about my queen we got to talk about Kerrigan Byrne because she also has some self-published books she has even more of these that I'm not showing but one that I have just started is I actually read um to seduce a Highlander this is part of her uh a magic highland connection you can actually get this entire box set i think it's on ku it was the last time i checked but i just wanted to own them because i love kerrigan burn and also they're just delicious so they're magical paranormal historical romances so the first one to seduce a highlander these are the berserkers they have faded mates it's fucking amazing next is is this one This is the Moray Druids, and this is the Banshees. And so there's three novellas in each one. So in total, there's nine of these. I really loved To Seduce a Highlander, and so I'm kind of waiting for Faro Feb to continue reading these ones because magic, paranormal, it mixes together. It's totally fine. And then the other series by her that is now... Um, indie published is the good girls series so seducing a stranger is also the same as a dark and stormy night so it is the seventh book in the victorian rebels but it's also the first book in the good girls series so this is going to be a four book and one novella series about the good sisters and i think it's <laughs> it's like prudence and honora and um I think one of them's like chastity and one of them's mercy or something like that, but they're amazing. Um, I absolutely love Kerrigan's writing and my only downside is how like short some of them are. But the third book comes out in February and the fourth one comes out in April, I think. So they'll all be out really soon. Um, but this one's absolutely great. This one has Carlton Morley from the Victorian Rebels. So if you remember him from The Highwaymen, you could start with this book and it won't really spoil you for the previous ones in the Victorian Rebels. And it also then starts the Good Girl series. So there you go. All right. I think that's everything I had for this one. Surprisingly, I was able to keep this pretty short. Let me know some of your favorite, um, let me know some of your favorite self-published authors who write historical romance because I love supporting indie authors whenever I can, but I'm always like a little bit hesitant for the indie authors because I never hear enough reviews about them. And not that that's the only reason, obviously I'm happy to read. I'm happy to read them. It's just, it's harder to get the, the wheels turning when I haven't heard anything about them. So I hope that you have a great historical romance readathon. I myself, I'm planning to start my vlog um, and start my reading for them. Um, I am actually going to be reading Scheming the Duke by E.L. Michaels as my indie published book because I was given an arc for that at the time and then I never got around to it, um, which is a bummer, but I'm going to try to read that and do a review for that since the author graciously sent me a review copy of it so there you go thank you so much for watching this i put up new videos three to four times a week and hopefully i will see you in the next one bye